Hi, it's Mark. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're building up an Eaton board with some trunking around it. This is a bit of a prefab off-site, ready to go and drop it in. It's an awkward plant room. There's not a lot of space and we wanted to get it as ready as we can just so we can go and chuck it on the wall, basically. So that's my job for today. I'm going to show you how I do it. We'll do a bit of a time lapse. I'm not sure how it's going to work because my um, other camera isn't working. So I'm going to, have to use my web camera on the computer, but we'll figure it out. We'll get something together and I'll run you through the process, take you through some of the steps and show you how I've prefab some um, containment bends. The reason I'm doing this is at the minute, I can't get hold of any accessories for 100 be 100 trunking or very, very difficult to get hold of them. Um, even cities, there doesn't seem to be any 90s on stock with their web web ordering, so I can't get them from there. So we thought, you know what, let's do it ourselves. We'll see how long it takes as we'll compare it on price. You know, what's a typical bend? 20-ish quid. So if we can um, save a bit of money in the purpose of making this video, then why not? Or it could be a clear demonstration as to why it's not very cost effective to actually manufacture your bends in the first place. But let's get to it. Let's see how this comes out. Get involved in the comments. Let me know what you think. And again, this probably isn't how they teach it in college anymore. I learned this a long, long time ago, and it's not something that's probably current with modern methods, but this is how I do it all the same. The first thing to do with your trunking is to get a measurement for the distance of the board. You're gonna come down if you're cutting your own corner, and this will be your center line. You can do it with a tape, but I prefer to offer it up and then just mark down the side where I want that center line to be. So that's step one, and that's where we'll form all our other marks to cut the trunking. So I got the trunking out and you can see me just trying to secure it. So we're going to get a nice solid lock while doing these marks. You need a set square. So if you've not got one, you're going to need to get one. And then it's a case of marking a center line. And I'll explain closer up exactly how you do this in a sec. But I just thought I'd show you step back, me scratching my head, trying to figure this out. It's not always straightforward. It can be a bit of a mind mend if you're not used to doing a fair old bit of metal work. Um, I'm not, I don't do a lot of this by choice, as I said, we usually buy our prefab, prefabbed um, ends and corners, we're not ones for, for making it out on site anymore, it's just not cost effective, I don't think, but we thought we'd do this just to see if that was true, at today's money, what these things cost, we'd give it a go, see how long it took us, and um, you know, we can always factor this in, it's nice sometimes to do these things, I enjoyed myself, if nothing else. Okay, so there's all kinds of different ways you can mark and measure out trunking to cut your angles. Um, there's an excellent video, I think, from GSH from a while ago, which does it a different way to this. So if you want to know how to do it in terms of what you should be doing for your AM2, check that one out. But this is how I do it. You essentially mark a centre line. Now, you can use the width of the trunking to obtain this distance, but a 45 degree square works just the same. And that gives you, your, I think they call them B and C lines in the um, or A and B lines. I don't know how it all works. But I've always done it like this. So you get your two side lines, um, and then on the back, where you're cutting down, so this is where you're gonna cut the V-shape out, you again use your 45 degree off these lines that you take down the sides, and then go to the midpoint again. So I've drawn arrows where I'm gonna cut. So we're gonna cut down these two side lines here, file down this back edge, this'll pop out. We're then gonna cut down these diagonal lines to take the triangle out, file all those down as well. And then just on the bottom, you'll see I've marked the front lip out again with a 45 degree cut, just so we can take that out too. And then it should be ready to shape. Just to steady the trunking while you're cutting it, stick a bit of timber or something inside it just to keep it nice and rigid. And yeah, I'm just gonna run through it now on the time lapse. You'll have probably seen that. So let's have a look how that comes together. So I thought I'd save you having to listen to the grinder all the way through this, but you can see me here just cutting out those shapes that I mentioned. So there's the first flat edge and then the triangle on the back, and you can see the grinder is giving up a little bit. So we'll press on and see how that comes out. See, I've got a fresh battery in, and I decided to take that triangle and rectangle out in one piece. Then it's a case of just file down your edges, make sure they're nice and smooth. You can go back over it with a grinder if you need to just tidy it up a little bit. And then I'm going to move on to the other end now. So we need to make a mark again um, off the DB, which I'd already done earlier on. Just double and triple check your measurements. And then set two again. As I said, you mark your centre line. Then use your 45 degree angle when you've gone all the way around that centre line. And come back to form your triangular shape so you know what you're cutting out from where. And again, if you want, just to make it extra clear, you can mark out your edges as well. You know, the more markings, the better. As long as you know which ones you're cutting, it's all good. 
So you can see my cut out now and I just need to debare all these edges obviously but essentially we've cut a big triangle out the back, a top rectangular section and then a little groove just in this front lip to enable it to bend and that should now swing over into a 90. So we'll see how that comes out in a sec. So you can maybe see it starting to take shape now. We've got our first corner loosely set. So you can see we use the triangle that we'd off cut. It's not fast and tight yet, so don't worry about that. And then obviously the rectangle shape, you bend around your corner internally. It meets the end of the DB. We're then coming down here, we've cut our other 90 ready. Again, we're just waiting to secure that. And then we've got our final 90 drop down off the bottom of the board. And this is when it's gonna be installed. You'll have the charge points coming out of here. So we're going to have our main feeds coming into the top and then running around the trunk in to enter to the bottom of the board and we're going to have our charge points entering down here and swooping around to come into the top of the board. When you see it on the wall in the plant room it'll make sense but this is just off-site fabrication to make our lives a little bit easier while we're, we're working. Um, and yeah, the time lapse on this hopefully comes out alright and I'll show you a little bit more of this as we move on. So you can see Matthew's gone outside just to grind down those triangle and rectangle shapes, make sure we've got the edges all smoothed off, and then they're ready to be put inside this trunking and secure it all up. So I mean, you can use straps and bands that you can get pre-cut, but we wanted to try and do it without any of the extras that you can buy off the shelf at all, and just put it all together. Um, you know, as, as you would fabricating on site, back in the day, I guess, I used to do this a fair old bit uh, many, many years ago, so I thought we'd just give it a go. Um, so we've got our corners in and again these are just temporary to hold it while we get the um, gasket set on the distribution board and I'll show you that later on as well. The triangles stay in place but obviously these with the roofing nuts and bolts we're just putting through for now is just to hold it solid while we do that work later on. So we're kind of get, making sure we get those holes in the right place for that as well. So you can see we're bolting through on the back and again generally try and do nuts out. But sometimes when you fit in containment around distribution boards that doesn't always work and you've got to put them in the orientation where it makes stuff fit at the end of the day so that's what we're doing with this little piece of work here okay so you'll have seen us doing this on the time lapse anyway but we've marked up for our mounting plate the gasket so we need to cut a slightly larger opening into the trunking we've drilled through for all the fixing holes both top and bottom so we're just going to reopen this now so we can get the grinder in and, and slot it so it's all ready to put back together and secure all the angles and see how it all looks as one and have a good old tidy up. So you can see we've got our gasket in at the top now. We've drilled through and bolted these with M5s, I think, maybe M6s. You do come with some nuts and bolts with it, but a little bit flimsy, I think, so we've just drilled through and used these. There's a little brass one on the bottom down there as well, so we can attach that to an earthing lug so we can earth the trunk in. I've also bolted it through on this side plane as well, just to give it a bit of extra rigidity down the side, because this is gonna be mounted onto uni struts. It's just try and lock it all together a bit. See, we've formed our bend on the bottom here as well. So that's all done, and that's ready for taking the cables off into the board as we discussed earlier. So that's kind of a step back view of it. Just got to get the end cap in at the top and I've realised I forgot to overseal a little bit so that's going to be fun. But we'll, we'll get it in there and then I can lid up, get the lid cut to size and that's that one ticked off. So we're lidding up now and I prefer to offer it up to find my centre line so that the centre line is on the back edge of your trunk in. Or you can come from the outer edge of this one and form a 45 degree and you essentially need to cut this triangle out if you want to bend that way. So you imagine you take that triangle out That'll swing over and then the two pieces of metal are joined together and away to the next corner. Um, we're going to see if we can do this in one and we'll give it a go. Um, sometimes it gets a bit flimsy on the edges so if it cuts through it's no great shakes but we'll try for that not to happen. So you can see we've loosely fitted the lid. Obviously it's not on the wall or anything rigid yet so it's a little bit flexible popping apart in places. But that will all be dandy once it's on there. You see we've got the trunking cut in one. I'll show you on the back of these bends see it's not cut all the way through you just retain this last little bit bend it around like i say it's not clipping down because that's obviously wafting in free air at the minute but you see we've got nice clean cuts all the way along put a few extra fixings in for the for the lid um turnbuckles web was escaping me there so i'm just going to build up the main switch now pop the mcbs on and that is ready to go and mount 
onto this wall and, and you'll see when we do that why the trunking shaped the way it is so obviously we've got the bottom end there that's going to go off so we can get to our car charge points and then we've got this flush edge here i've had to keep it flush and you'll see why later and then obviously all around the side here so we can run our cables top to bottom and we've got these nice big slots for everything to drop in uh, neat and tidy so you can see we've got the board basically ready now so it's all done we've got the main switch in it's got a little neutral link in there so obviously these have the covers on they just clip in this front cover goes on as well in fact i'll put it all together in a minute and i'll show you it finished i want to show you the main switch little neutral link mcbs are all in we'll probably just lay out with those on site and that's kind of it step back look at the trunk in we're ready to tie that in with some existing trunk in that's on site um good to go um pretty straightforward i think so i'll just pop this together i'll jump back on the video and run you through what we've done okay so we've sort of propped up somewhere a bit neater now again it's all loose fit because it's like floating in free air but you can see essentially what we've got we've got our 90s cut in the tray they all form quite nice you'll see them on the bench as well uh, the trunking lids all cut we're ready to tie into the existing trunking we've got the db lid on we're all closed up ready to go the door does actually open obviously again just loose fit for now this is just some pre-assembly you can do off site saves so i hope you found that useful um just a quick run through how we set some trunking bends and you know like i said this isn't because we've chosen to do it you just can't get these accessories at the minute i tried from a few different places and gave up so we just decided to knock them up ourselves and if you've got any questions or comments drop them in below and um, we'll see you on the next video